And have a guess what I get to preach on? The peace of God. Now, I'm going to talk to the parents here because they get this. Have you ever had that day? It, it, it was unexpected. Uh, you were just doing all your normal thing. And then, from the moment you awoke, things started to unravel. There were tears. Uh, there was a skirmish in the back bedroom, which often happened in our house, uh, you know, with the two male kids. So I'm breaking that up. And then there's the <coughs> fight with the girls. And it went on. It just goes on. You know what I'm saying? Any parents here? And it escalates. Never escalates all the time. But on this day, and then you go, thank the Lord for school. You drop them off and it's their problem. But then you've got another problem. You're picking them up at 3.30 and it starts all over again. Yeah, he's sitting on me and he's got my seat belt. And the way it goes. And you're getting madder and madder and madder. And then over dinner, you don't even know why you're feeding them. And then you have this revelation, I gave birth to Satan. <laughs> and then it just goes on and on. And then eventually it reaches the time of the day where they all go to bed and they go to sleep. And you know that feeling when you get in the couch and just sit down and it's like, you know that peaceful feeling? <laughs> you know that day? It does happen, right? For many people, it happens at work. Some days it happens like that. It can happen. And, but that feeling, but do you know what? The peace of God is actually far more deeper than just that circumstantial peace. I want to unpack it and talk a bit about it this morning. Is that okay? Oh, what a feeling. But did you realize that Jesus actually came to give you and I peace? He actually came to give us peace. Yes, he came to forgive us of our sins. He came to redeem us. He came to provide for us and give us the Holy Spirit. But you know one of the great gifts of God is peace. Amazing. I'm reminded of this whole thing. Because, you know, when I grew up as a teenager, hey, man... Peace, man. We had a hippie peace. And you know what a hippie peace was? No commitments. No kids, no marriage. Just be free, baby. And go off into the sunset and pick flowers and just sing Kumbaya. And you've got peace. But you know, that's a false peace. Because again... It's the world's kind of peace. It's looking for peace externally. It's looking for peace in other people, in events, in what we possess. But the Bible says a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. And so all, all, everyone's seeking peace. Everyone's peace, peace, peace. But very few people actually find it because what I've discovered, it actually comes through faith. Faith actually brings peace, and we'll find out about that. But we know this about other uh, attributes or values in the kingdom of God. For instance, faith. Let's look at faith. Faith is in the presence of, not the absence of, doubt. So to have faith doesn't mean I'm going to walk around, there's never be any doubt, there's never going to be fear, there's never going to be a need because I'm just walking in the clouds of faith. No, what we've discovered is true faith is manifested when fear comes at us, when doubt comes, and we learn that true faith is exhibited and manifested before doubt. Well, what about hope? Where does hope flourish? Not in the absence of despair, but in the presence of despair. We've had this year, Chris so ably put it, this 2020, people want to forget it and obliterate it. No, no, no. We can stand in hope. Because hope grows. Hope is alive in the face of despair. What about joy? Where does joy exhibit itself? Well, I think so many people mistake joy for happiness. Because you see, happiness 
revolves around happenings. So if everything's happy in my family and happy at work, I'm happy. But if everyone's grumpy, I'm grumpy. If everything's going wrong, then everything goes wrong for me. That's happiness. But joy abounds in the presence of sadness and loss. So you see, joy from God isn't about being funny or hilarious. Like we tell a joke, ha, 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 you know, I'm happy that made me laugh. That, that's a form, you know, you could say a shallow form of joy. We call it happiness. Joy is this deep-rooted feeling and knowledge that even though I'm in a period of loss, I can be joyful on the inside. Not ha, ha, ha but rather, God, it's going to be okay. I'm going to get through this. You're going to make a way for me. Peace is in the presence, not the absence of turmoil. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Can you remember the story in Mark 4 where Jesus tells his disciples, let's get in a boat, we're going over the other side. Who's in the boat? Peter, James, John, Andrew. All qualified professional fishermen. They grew up in boats. They get halfway across. The Bible says a great windstorm comes and beats against the boat and they're afraid. A fisherman afraid in a storm? Yeah, that's how bad it was. Jesus is asleep on a pillow in the boat. It says they grabbed him and shook him and they said, Jesus, it was probably Peter. Don't you care that we're about to die? And Jesus stood up, it says, and he rebuked the winds and the waves and it says, peace came. The peace in Jesus that allowed him to sleep in a storm is now being manifested directly at the storm and he's bringing peace. The disciples look and they say, well, who is this? What manner of person is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Why could Jesus sleep? Because he knew his father was in control. He knew that he was protected and guided by his heavenly father. So whether he lived or died, that's God's decision, and that brought peace. See, if you haven't got God's peace, you'll fall to pieces. God wants you and I to live in peace. Have you seen the Keep Calm t-shirts? Has anyone got one today? Anyone here got a... Keep calm. I, I had a look at them the other day. You know, you can buy a calm, keep calm T-shirt for everything. I, I always look at signs and read them. I don't know why, but I, I look at signs. Maybe I'm in the Signs and Wonders ministry. Um, and I saw one the other day in a high-rise building. We were in, in the city, and it said this. It said like this. In case of a fire, don't panic. Are you serious? I'm in a lift and it's burning, and you're saying, keep calm. Crazy. But you know you can get keep calm t-shirts like this one. Keep calm and bowl on. Here's another one. Keep calm and hug a collie. Okay. And here's a good one for our English friends. Keep calm and drink tea. <laughs> However, you know, again, it's not... Biblical theology. Again, you're keeping calm by hugging a collie or doing something or, again, it's external. Do you see that? It should be like this. We should have our own Christian keep calm and it should say this. Have faith in God and you'll be calm. Because, you see, faith in God releases confidence and when we're confident in God, the peace of God comes into our hearts. So why don't we experience peace 
in our lives? Why is it that so many people, even in the church, I've met people in the church over the years, and they're not at peace. They're fighting with everybody, and the church didn't do this, and the senior pastors don't do that, and and they're all uptight. Where does that come from? The Apostle James helps us. Look at this. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Where do wars and fightings among you come from? What a question. They come from your lusts that war in your members. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. I used to think that was to ask a lady, but it doesn't mean that. It means to ask for the wrong motives that you may consume it on your lust. You adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So what's he saying? Where does all this turmoil come from? It comes from within. It comes from from within. From what? Our lusts. What are they? They're our desires and our thoughts and our motives. They're driving us away from peace. Jesus came to bring inner peace so it would drive us toward his peace. Amazing, isn't it? Idea. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled. Amazing. But you know, the Christmas message from the angel declared this. He said this, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. The whole atmosphere of the kingdom of God is one of peace. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not about what foods you eat or you don't eat. It's not about what you wear or you don't wear, whether you had an earring or you don't have an earring, or whether your hair's short or long. That's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. What's righteousness? Summed up? Right relationships with God and with each other. And when that happens, peace. When you've got right relationships horizontally, vertically with God, horizontally with other people, and you've got peace, have a guess what comes? Joy. Because everyone's happy, everyone's blessed. Amazing. Jesus came to bring this. So what is this peace? Let's look at some scriptures very quickly. Number one, peace is a gift from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives you. If you and I are looking for peace in the world, we won't find it. We'll find happiness and we might find joyous occasions But to live in peace, that condition of peace, it comes as a gift from Jesus Christ. Peace with God is the beginning of a life of peace. So not only is it a gift from God, but it's the beginning, it's the starting point. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we're born again, We're changed on the inside, and we are set free from ourselves. God removes the sin, but he also removes the old man, and he puts a new heart in us, and he brings harmony, and he brings peace. We're at peace with ourselves. We're at peace with God. Wow. Jesus is now the center of our life. He is our peace. The struggle is over. No more striving, no more trying to prove, no more fighting, no more surviving. The peace of God is ruling in our hearts by faith. As I said before, the peace of God is found in faith. 
Look what the, the writer to Romans, Paul, said. He said, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Wow. Faith in Christ is so powerful. When we operate faith in Christ, peace comes into our life. Wow. Because no more about me. I'm not center now. Jesus is center. And that's where my faith is. That is a place of confidence. That's a place of joy, a place of peace. (laughs) Wow. Faith is removed. Uh, Sorry, faith removes fear. Faith removes doubt. Faith removes worry and anxiety. We've entered the rest of faith. Why is it called in Hebrews the rest of faith? Because we've stopped striving and doing our own thing and doing our own works. We now trust in Him. We're not trying to promote ourselves. We're not trying to make ourselves better Christians. We're not trying to behave properly. We now are in the rest of faith. Christ is center. And with that comes confidence. With that comes joy. And we live in peace. The war inside is over. As a matter of fact, we begin to discover that all things work together for good. People are trying to cancel 2020. I don't want to cancel it. I believe all things work together for good. We're going to be the stronger for 2020. We're going to be even, we're going to be even stronger and greater, and God's going to increase us, right? Why? Because our faith isn't in the world. It's not in people. It's not in money. It's not in things. It's in Jesus alone. And he's the center, and he's going to make a way for you. He is going to make a way for you. As a matter of fact, we could even take it a step further and say, well, in that case, it's all good. Everything's good. Does that mean it's nice or un- it's not unpleasant? No, no, no. Does it mean it's not difficult? No, there are difficulties. But you see, just as faith grows in doubt, circumstances. Peace will grow in us in turmoil because we'll be like Jesus asleep in the boat. Our confidence is in God alone and we trust him. Wow, I love that. Did you know peace is found in prayer as we daily walk with God and just talk with him? Learn how to have a conversation or dialogue with God all day in your mind, in your heart. When things happen, commit it to the Lord. Look what Paul said. Do not be worried or anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now is the biggest word in the Bible. And. Do you see that? Don't worry, don't be anxious, pray, and, here it is, look at this, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I love it. Peace is a state of mind. It's a gift from God. It's something we experience. But then it's a state of mind. It's a It's an angle, it's a view, it's a perspective. Look what the Bible says. This is the the World English Bible. You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed or fixed on you. Paul put it the other way. He said to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded. In other words, to have a mind focusing on the good, on the spiritual, on the Word of God, on what God is blessing me with, he said, is life and peace. Did you know there are three levels of God's peace in the Bible? Number one, the first level is experiencing God's peace that we talked about before. It all begins within me, within you. When we personally experience God's peace, The turmoil's gone, the doubt's gone, the fear's gone, and now there's peace. The second level is living in God's peace. Then out of that experience, I begin to live and discover the peace of God wherever I go. It's flowing out of me because I'm at 
peace with myself, with God and others. Then the highest level of peace is making God's peace. Just like Jesus stood up as he was asleep, resting in the peace of his father, and he said, peace be still to the storm. Now you and I can be peacemakers. Amazing. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. But here's what I've discovered. We cannot make peace with others if we're at war with ourselves. If I'm constantly agitated and upset and insecure in my faith and I'm worried about what other people, I'm just going to be a nightmare to deal with. And have a guess, I've met some nightmares. It's because people are so often looking for peace out there. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll change my job, or I'll change church, or I'll do this. But you've heard me say this before. I love Chinese proverbs. I went to the end of the earth, and there I was. See, change of location may give you some fresh ideas and connection, but do you know where lasting change comes from? In here through the miracle, life-changing power of the Holy Spirit. That's where change comes. And when we get it in here, and we've got the peace of God in us, have a guess, wherever we go, we'll, be, we'll become peacemakers. Let me finish. Here we go. Let's round up. Do you want four top tips from Proverbs on peacemaking? Ready? I'm going to move real quick. Here they are. Number one, peacemakers love imperfect people. Peacemakers love imperfect people. Hatred stirs up strifes, the Bible said, but love covers all sins. I've got to allow you to be imperfect. I've got to allow you the moment where you're going to say the wrong thing. I've got to allow you the moment where you forgot something important to me because you're not perfect. So if I'm going to be a peacemaker, that's my approach. I've got to allow you to be imperfect, and you've got to allow me to be imperfect. That's how peacemaking works. Number two, you right? Look, number two, here we go. Peacemakers don't meddle in other people's affairs. Butt out, in other words. I always ask myself these three questions, questions like this. Number one, am I involved? No? Oh, okay, out. Number two, can I help them? Maybe I could. Maybe I can't. Number three, am I authorized to help? Is it my place to help these people? Because if we just get in, we're just going to meddle. Look what the Bible says. It's an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. Number four, peacemakers stop the gossip train chain. We've got to learn when we gossip comes, it stops here. We break the chain. Instead of passing it all on. You know the old thing, is it true, is it fair? Whatever, just break the chain. You're a peacemaker. It doesn't mean we're not going to say something at the right and appropriate time, but we don't hand on the juice. It stops with me because I'm a peacemaker. And number four, so that was three. Number four, peacemakers have their anger under control. If you get angry, stop it. Just stop it. Get it under control. You can control it. You've got the Holy Spirit. You've got the Bible. You've got church. Get it under control. Look what it says. An angry man stirs up strife. And a furious man abounds in transgression. Let's just let the peace of God rule in our hearts. It's not to be angry. Yeah, but did you see what they did? Doesn't matter. God saw. Yeah, but you, you I'm going to do something. No, 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 no. Don't meddle. Be a peacemaker. Let me finish on this thought. You know that little woman that pressed through the crowd and touched the hem of Jesus' garment? Jesus said an amazing thing to her. 
Look what he said. He said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Right? Go in peace and be healed. Remember, she was healed. The Bible says, you read Mark 5, the moment she touched him, power came and she felt the blood dry up in her as she said, I'm healed. Jesus turns to her and says, your faith has made you whole or healed, correct? But then he says, go in peace and be healed. I, I like the King James Bible, it says, go in peace and be whole. Jesus makes a connection directly with healing, wholeness, and peace. Not only does God want to heal us on the inside, He wants us to live a whole life, body, soul, and spirit. And when we are healed and when we are whole, we can go in peace, live in peace, making peace. Wow. In the Amplified Bible, it's the present continuum tense. It says, go into peace and be continually healed and free. Wow. Isn't God good today? You can just relax, confident of the fact that you've been healed, you're whole, and you can go in peace. God's priority is the healing of our soul. It all begins on the inside. And we get the inside right, it begins to affect our relationships, our family, our work, our ministry, everything. Because we're no longer in turmoil. My peace I give to you, Jesus said, not as the world gives, but my peace. The peace of God which passes all understanding.